No, I mean, it's, it's a lot of information um, from a lot of people and a lot of resources that we have. And it's my job to vet it out and um, plan the um, best possible scenario for us. Um, it's, it's, about the, it's about the team. It's about the Pistons. And, how we can improve and uh, continue to take a step forward. So, no, it's definitely a lot of information, a lot of input, um, a lot of people giving their ideas and opinions. Um, and just making sure I uh, let it all out so we can land in an appropriate place. But, yeah, to, I mean, when you're not picking one, you – Know the board and play the board, uh, et cetera. Uh, and draft night is a challenge uh, in itself to kind of maximize the team uh, in so many different ways. Uh, so, no, we're um, working hard at it and uh, excited um, on Thursday when it's our time. Not as much. Um, I'm going to stick to our ethos and making sure we get the best player that fits us um, in every way the locker room, on the floor, in the community, etc. Um, we think we have a good nucleus of, uh, of young men that do that. And, um, we want to continue to answer that. Uh, fit over position, et cetera. No, we'll, we'll do what's best for, for the team. Does this year maybe feel more unpredictable just given that there's a pretty clear top three and then once you get to four, uh, it's pretty much a wide open field and you know, it seems like a lot of teams are considering trades and what that means. Do you feel like this year could be maybe harder to pay exactly who will be there compared to the last year year before? Uh, I thought last year <laughs> people thought they had it pegged and it didn't go in that order. Um, so no, um, obviously um, there could be um, some shakeup um, in you know, maybe two through ten doesn't go uh, according to plan, but that's why you, you know you really have to know the players and the board uh, and be ready for all scenarios. But no, it's yeah, I, I think it. Can get a little um, dicey after one. Troy, on the night of the lottery, you said there were three different tiers of players um, from the group that you would be selecting in. Has your outlook on that group changed since the line for your eyes work out? Uh, no, not really. 
I mean, it's maybe expanded a little bit, but I think it's three tiers of, of players in the in the lottery. Joy, around the exit interviews, you said that well, around the wrong time over there. No, I'm, I mean, we're still open to improving the team, absolutely. Um, do we like um, the players that we've been vetting out at five? Uh, absolutely, but um, we're still open to um, different opportunities as well. So, no, definitely still looking at all our op all of our options um, to improve the team. Obviously, all options on the table, but do you go in kind of expecting that there's going to be a lot of movement and that you will be involved in that movement because you haven't been reluctant to be involved in it before? No, I mean, we just want to be ready. Um, when it comes at us, I mean, walk it through the park at night, you got to be ready. For whatever's gonna come, you know, and uh, draft night is that way. Like you gotta be prepared, um, you know, different scenarios, trade scenarios, different players, you know, dropping, uh, players rising. Uh, that's why the work is so important now. So on on draft night, we're equipped to to handle uh, what happens. And the teams that are equipped um, usually can take advantage of draft night and um, feel good about uh, things that happen at night. Troy, with all that being said, does that make number five, everything that you said, does that make number five that more valuable now because of the simple fact that anything can happen after one because how crazy it can be going down the park and not knowing? Does that make number five that more valuable? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, these picks are, are, these top five, top seven picks are valuable. And uh, because it's unpredictable after uh, after one. So um, we feel good about the, the, the value of, of, of five. Uh, definitely, and um, there's been a lot of uh, banter and talk back and forth on, on a lot of picks. Feel good um, about being at five and the value there. Absolutely. Troy, speaking of a lot of picks, do you feel like there are more picks you've had to bet and consider this year than in the last couple of years? For y'all. Hmm. Probably so. Um, Had to vet out um, quite a few scenarios um, in the past and in, in this year. Um, maybe it could be more, um, just because of where we are as a team as well. Um, we uh, like our young players. We like our veterans. Uh, we have a, a, a new coach now and. We want to get everybody on the floor together, um, see what that looks like. And so the scenarios and vetting out these players uh, has become a little different just because of where we are um, as a team. Um, even though we haven't really won any games yet, uh, we like we, we like a lot in life right now. Sort of, I see this last, last week, but what is Monty's input Yes, yep. Since he's uh, been hired, he's been a part of everything, the interviews, the uh, on-court workouts, um, and watching film. Uh, 
he's he's jumped in with two feet. Um, he's ready. He has a lot of keen insight on players that we really value. Uh, and it's been it's been great to get his um, thoughts and uh, vision as on players. Um, so no, it's been extremely um, helpful thus far. With that said, with Monty here, could that alter your plan draft? Well, like he knows people around the league, veteran players who could be in trade possibilities and everything else. His presence, does that possibly change your strategy? Not really. I mean, he he's coached for a while. He knows. He's had, he has great relationships in the league. So, um, we hope to leverage that. Um, at the appropriate time, but uh, so far as the draft process um, of anything, uh, he double he doubled down on uh, what we've been doing. Um, he and I um, see things the same way when it comes to the players and the type of players we want to bring in. So, um, you no, know, he would he he would tell you the same thing. He's all about. Uh, we're all about the same things. Do you have a sense at all of what the new CBA will mean, maybe as early as draft on teams looking to maybe avoid that second game burner? Do you, do you get a sense there'll be more opportunity in the trade market, maybe as early as draft night, because of the, of, the, of the restrictions of the new CBA? Yeah, there's some thought there. Um, teams are really have to start looking at their roster comp um, and how it plays out with their contract. So there, there could be some vulnerable situations that we could take advantage of. And like I said, we want to be prepared and working hard to uh, make sure that uh, if those opportunities were afforded that we're, we're there. But no, absolutely. Definitely some, um, you know, work and thought. Uh, there to make sure we're 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 ready. Troy, you talk about finding guys that fit your team, and you've done that so well. The first few drafts that you've been here, what are some of the specific skill sets or characteristics of a guy that that you think would fit right in with this group? Um, <laughs> we want serious basketball players. We're committed to. Um, we're still in the Pistons, and that, that comes in different um, shapes, sizes, and colors, but uh, we want serious players. Uh, we want guys that uh, want to represent the Pistons on the floor and off the floor in the community, uh, guys that work. Uh, we want guys that really understand um, the dynamics uh, of the team. I've stated um, many times that um, we want to put a team on the floor that uh, our fans in our city can be proud of and they say, okay, they look like a Piston team. I mean, from the bad boys to the going to work teams, we want to be a third iteration of a team that they can say, okay, that that looks familiar, That that's how our team should look. So um, we want all those traits and characters, characteristics of of, of players. Um, I think we've done that. Um, we just haven't won any games yet, but uh, as we get healthy, um, and now with the addition of, of Coach Williams, um, we're very optimistic about uh, having a team on the floor that represents that. Sure. You can go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, you know, in your first year, you identified players like Bay and Stewart even before you went into that, that draft as well as Isaiah Livers and then Durham with the 13th pick last year. Are there any players in this draft uh, that you were considering uh, as well, kind of lower down in that, that first round? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We always don't consider those players. But, yeah, I definitely got – we definitely have our eyes on, 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 on players. In a draft, there's always guys you say, okay, who who's a piston? And um, – we are identifying those guys and 
I, I just think the draft gives you a chance to kind of represent who you are. And hopefully we will uh, draft some young men and we, we've been here together long <coughs> enough that you guys can say, oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. So I was wondering if it was as, as rich this year as the previous ones. Um, yes. Yes. Kind of following up on that, you've got the first pick in the second round. Traditionally, there are some big players in the round of the 30s. Um, but also, with, when we talk about teams that might be looking to get off of, of money, some teams pick another 20s. Maybe you'd rather have that pick at 31. Is that, a, is, that a, a, is that an asset that gives you some options to do some things? Or? It, he wants to be in a war room. <laughs> he, he, he keeps bringing up all these scenarios. I, yeah, for sure. Um, 31 is a valuable pick. Um, I think it carries a, a lot of weight for, for different reasons. Uh, contract, uh, teams that may want to do different things uh, with a second round pick versus a first round pick. So no, it's, um, we like to pick um, and do a lot with it. Uh, so also, I mean, like you said, there, there, there's there's been a, a, a lot of Success at um, the top of the second round because uh, guys, you know, drop down there for different reasons. That you know, every year, every agent you talk to says, you know, my guys on between twenty and thirty, and that's like twenty-five players. So <laughs> some of those players are going in the second round. So you usually get a good player at the top of the second round. Uh, I would, I would. We did this study, I think I made it. But I would say 31 to 38 has probably been a better crop of players than 21 to 28. Somebody could do that study, I think we might have done it, but I would, I would wager that there's been better players from 31 to 38 than 21 to 28. Troy, go back to something you were talking about earlier. Prioritizing what you guys like. There's the age old battle of like boom or bust versus guys who you think can just be like solid role players for a long time. And the NBA draft is weird where not every draft has a bona fide superstars in the top five or whatever. I guess what is your opinion on that? Like drafting a guy who you're sure will be an NBA player for 10 years versus a guy who has a little bit more risk? And does your the makeup of your team factor into that or where your team is at the time? Definitely, you, you weigh all of that uh, into it. But for me, um, I, mean, I like the long ball. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not bunting or trying to slap it into <laughs> short center. Like, uh, I'm gonna take a big swing. So, uh, especially if I only have one chance at it. Like, if I got three chances, okay, I might bunt one, but if one chance at it, I'm going for the big fly. <laughs> that's, that's me. I mean, they say, uh, Say the big swing you're talking about, you're fine if the guy seems to have risk but has a higher upside. Not risk as a person, basketball, the, the value with the basketball evaluation would be different. Okay, so, um, no, I'm not, you know, I mean, okay, this. This guy can, you know, 
get 18 rebounds, but he robs banks. No, we're not. <laughs> we're not taking that risk. <laughs> but if if a guy averaged, you know, seven points because he's playing, you know, 16 minutes. You know, perfect example, Stephen Adams. You know, I, funny story, I took my best friend to a game. Uh, Pittsburgh was playing at Georgetown. I was home in D.C. scouting. And I took him to the game, and Stephen Adams scores two points. And I told him, I said, like, we want to draft this guy to be our center. He looked at me, he's like, what? He scored two points and four rebounds. So, Stephen Adams turned out to be pretty good, but you know, you, you, you follow what I'm saying? That, that probably was, you know, he averaged like six points, seven points, and five rebounds in college. So, that could have been <coughs> deemed as a, a risk. But it wasn't, he wasn't a risk, it was just people's evaluation. So, you're saying no bankrupt? Uh, not anymore. <laughs>